Welcome to lecture outline four. Uh, we're going to be talking about atoms, but I wanted to show you my shirt. It's got a chemistry joke on it, or maybe a biology joke, we'll see. What do you call an acid with an attitude? Um, an amino acid. It's in honor of my mother-in-law who got me this shirt. She found out that I really like shirts like this, so... Anywho, back to our regularly scheduled uh, lecture outline where we're going to be talking about atoms. And we're going to be reviewing a little bit here. So we've talked about atomic structure before and the fact that the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. And that in that nucleus, because the protons and neutrons are there, there's approximately 99.97% of the mass of an atom. So I'm giving you the squiggly equal signs, which means approximately... Ninety-nine point nine seven percent electrons are around the nucleus. So our picture of an atom blown up many, many times because it's much smaller than this is the atom has the electrons flying around in complicated shapes that we still have yet to talk about. And right inside it is the teeniest, tiniest little nucleus. And that nucleus already drawn much bigger than it actually should be for this picture, has the protons and the neutrons. So that's something we've talked about before. Now, um, how do they know that? Well, and um, we're going to skip right to the actual theory of the atom that uh, currently holds. And that was uh, largely discovered, or one of the main pieces of evidence was from the Rutherford gold foil experiment. This is an experiment where they took a gold foil, which can be made mere atoms thick if you pound it and uh, uh, into very thin sheets. Um, just so, and it's shown here as one atom. I'm not quite sure it was that thin. And um, there's a screen here, and this screen is going to be basically photographic film. If something energy like hits it. There'll be a, uh, it'll light up and record it. And this is an alpha ray. And an alpha ray is something that you will most likely see again if you're taking second semester general chemistry. But an alpha ray is a, he is a ray of helium nuclei. And a helium nucleus has two protons and two neutrons. And it's a whole nother discussion about how they get an alpha ray. But what he did was he shot this through the foil and uh, the vast majority of the helium nuclei in the alpha ray went straight through and are right here on this image. A few of them were deflected and approximately one in 8,000 was basically bounced off the gold foil directly back right in this area right here where the alpha um, ray was coming in. And that at the time was shocking. Uh, Rutherford, Rutherford uh, was uh, known to have said at the time that it's like you took a 15-inch uh, artillery shell from the military and fired it at a piece of tissue paper and it bounced back. That's the tissue paper was what they thought the atom was. It was actually called the bread pudding model, uh, something that is pretty British, uh, although I do enjoy a good bread pudding myself. Um, anyway, and so this, this, the fact that it bounced off about one in 8,000 uh, was used to hypothesize and then eventually be proven as a theory that the nucleus was a teeny tiny center of mass uh, in the middle of the atom surrounded by largely empty space in which the electrons flew. Pretty cool. Now here's a little bit more information, a table of masses and charges for protons, neutrons, and electrons. And 
we're not so worried about the charge. Uh, these specific numbers, these are in C coulombs. That's a physics term that you might run into. But we just want to know plus one, minus one, and neutral. And those are arbitrary terms. We just call them plus one and minus one because we like simple numbers. Um, but the important thing is that a um, couple things here noted. Proton mass is approximately equal to the neutron mass, and they're each approximately 1,800 times uh, more mass than an electron has. And the proton and electron are attracted to each other. We might symbolize this by having a proton be a positive charge, an electron be a negative charge, and anything, you know, uh, oppositely charged is attracted to each other. And so let me just put E superscript minus for electron. P, a lowercase p typically, is our symbol for a proton. And then you might ask yourself, why doesn't the electron crash into the nucleus if they are oppositely charged? And that is a very good question that is in one of the layers that is too deep for this class. It is too deep. Uh, so uh, to be honest, I don't even 100% understand it. Uh, I have learned to accept it though. And uh, so, but the, 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 the short answer is uh, that to understand why it doesn't, you mostly have to understand quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics can explain why. So, and that's well beyond the scope of what we're doing here. For now, we accept that the electrons, even though they're attracted to the nucleus, and that's gonna, we're gonna talk about that a lot, they do not crash into the nucleus.